Greetings and welcome to an LGR quickly put together type of video thing because, uh, well, I am currently, as this video is going live, uh, at Vintage Computer Festival Midwest. And yeah, there's another camera there. Hello. Um, probably won't be using this too much because there's crap in the way. But yeah, I am uh, at Vintage Computer Festival Midwest 2023 in Elmhurst, Illinois from uh, September 9th and 10th. I think that's just those two days, uh, the Saturday and then Sunday. Uh, that's why this is the video this week and not something more substantial because I just haven't been able to get anything more substantial put together. But I still really do like doing these kinds of videos every so often, just taking a look at some old catalogs or flyers or inserts or circulars or whatever you want to call them. I don't know. I, I always want to call them catalogs, even though uh, CompUSA put actual catalogs out too, and they were uh, daggum substantial. Maybe we'll take a look at one of those some other time, but the newspaper ones, they're the ones that get me most excited back in the day. So uh, we're going to take a look at some of them right here, at least one of them. I don't know. A lot of these um, all look like <laughs> worth taking a look at. Uh, I recently got all of these on eBay from a seller in Michigan, I believe. And uh, you know, they were pretty much all the same circular flyer deals in the newspapers on Sundays, regardless of where you were. But yeah, these all range from 1999 to early 2002, I believe. And they all, oh wow, this one looks particularly awesome. I think we'll have to take a look at this one. Uh, they all look interesting, but some of them more so than others. But yeah, we're gonna take a look at uh, this one right here, just because, I mean, it's introdu uh, introducing the 1999 iMac G3s and the five new colors in addition to Bondi Blue that they began with. Just to check here. Yeah, these are prices that were valid from February 7th, 99 to February 13th, 99. Heck yeah. And there's some of these stores that it would have been valid at. I have yeah, the Greensboro, North Carolina store was the one local to me back then, but pretty much it was all the same ads everywhere, as far as I know. Anyway, the new Apple iMac, it's now more powerful. <laughs> By a little bit, 266 megahertz instead of 233, a six gig drive up from four gigs. And of course, really the main appeal were those new colors, so vibrant and uh, instantly collectible. It's kind of nuts how many people I see now seeking complete collections of iMac G3s, but can you blame them? These things were pretty immediately timeless. I, I always forget which ones that I have, whether it's the Blueberry or the Bondi Blue one. I believe it's the Blueberry one is one I have, but let's see what they had to say about it. The innovative translucent design of the iMac with an integrated 15 inch monitor now comes in five delicious colors. Indeed, perfect for individuals who want to show school spirit, Okay, match decor in a favorite room or simply express themselves through color. Choose the iMac that best suits your individual style. Also on here, we've got um, a Palm 3 from 3Con there. $300 for the, uh, yeah, it's just the standard Palm 3. I have a 3C with some color added to it. I uh, also have one of these, <laughs> the LG Phenom. Phenom? Yeah, monochrome handheld PC, $200. Just a, a little Windows CE device with a monochrome screen, nothing too crazy, but quite neat. Wow, look at that. Was $600, $400 instant savings. Incredible deal indeed. And oh, how exciting is this right here? SimCity 3000 was a brand new release. $30 for the new game right there. I mean, that is not bad at all. I considered that a very premium game at the time anyway. Uh, although I think I didn't actually get it until it was on sale anyway, because didn't have a lot of money, but you know, I was like 15 bucks eventually at Office Depot by the time like SimCity 3000 Unlimited came out. So I was able to get just the original version for a bit less. I always really enjoyed taking a look at this section too in CompUSA, just the main computers, the desktops that were on sale. I was always looking them over and taking notes, like what's the most expensive, what's the, least expensive, you know, what are, what are the trends happening at the time? I'm already seeing some interesting stuff here. So on the low end, for instance, we've got this uh, Compaq 350 megahertz AMD K6 II for $800 without the monitor, 64 megs of RAM, just four gigs of hard disk space and a 32 speed CD-ROM. Some kind of basic graphics, no doubt, but you know, it was the low end. 
And of course it's AMD, the K6-2s were always kind of the more affordable option. Um, that's what we ended up getting back then, uh, especially compared to like some of the Intel, uh, higher end Pentium 2s, the Celerons, the Pentium 3s, at least around 99, AMD was the budget choice. On that note, the compacts went up a bit. They mostly stuck with AMD K6s, at least uh, on this page of them. But Hewlett Packard over here, they have a, yeah, Celeron and a higher end uh, Pentium 2 right here. 400 megahertz, top of the line. $1,399 without the monitor, 96 megs of RAM, 12 gig hard disk, and a zip drive. <laughs> Although it's not pictured. They probably just use the same graphic for, yeah, both of those, because that's a floppy drive. Unless they replace the floppy drive with a zip drive, that would be interesting. We have one lone IBM desktop right here. Uh, also a K6 too, but a uh, 400 megahertz. It does come with a monitor and a printer, a Lexmark, of course, <laughs> being IBM. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Oh yeah, here we go. And CompUSA, they actually made their own PCs for a time. They were really just generic beige boxes, whatever, but the fact that it was CompUSA branded or, I don't know, it's, it's got some decals on there, presumably saying CompUSA PC. I just think that's really cool. I'd still kind of like to have one if I could find one in good shape. Uh, but yeah, 400 megahertz, 48 megs of RAM, 4.3 gig, to, yeah, this is standard stuff. ATI Rage Pro 8 meg video, that's cool, that's listed. And so is the ESS Solo 1 for the sound. If they're mentioning these things, I'm assuming like separate cards instead of integrated stuff. Plus it came with a monitor, how cool is that? <laughs> Most of these others don't. Speaking of monitors, oh my. Check out this $1,000 ViewSonic LCD, 15 inch <laughs> for definitely way worse re response and uh, look and just everything, contrast, all that uh, compared to a CRT. But you know, LCDs, they were exciting. They were thin, a few inches thick and there were flat panel, oh man. Had, you, had a ViewSonic demo day, you could see the latest monitor technology in person. How thrilling. 17 inch monitor under 200 though, CompUSA PC apparently also had their own rebadged <laughs> generic CRTs. This one would be extremely sweet even now though. This is ViewSonic, 19 inch, 0.25 millimeter dot pitch, 1600 by 1280 resolution, 549. Yeah, this would have been way better than that ViewSonic. <laughs> I wouldn't mind both though. I also love that this is in here. The time to address your Y2K concerns is now. CompUSA is the right offering to help you define solutions for your business or home. I remember seeing all of these different Y2K related things in there back then, like also these cards. I think it was a card they'd sell and you'd plop that in your computer and it would override your BIOS with a new ROM that was on there and make it Y2K compatible if it wasn't already, all, all these kind of things to like make your Y2K transition easier. <laughs> 1999, oh no, this is interesting. PC Companions. So this is an HP Jornada, Jornada? I've never actually said that out loud. I do have one. I don't remember if this one exactly or not, but this is a pretty high end one, $900 for a Windows CE little portable thing. 8.2 inch VGA screen, I mean, that's pretty nice. It's probably a lot of the cost right there. 16 megs of RAM. Also have a, a Casio E11 Palm PC, another little Windows CE device. Uh, I guess 99, 2000 was kind of the peak of those. This one's fascinating though, what the heck is that? A Franklin Rex Pro 5 DS. It's like a little personal organizer, but it looks neat. Plus it has a PCM CIA slot. Huh, got a couple of digital cameras, or well, USB webcams, really. Just a regular home camera and the pro <laughs> digital camera. Mm, 640 by 480, professional resolution. Let's see. Oh. <laughs> what the heck? This is great. I, okay, I just now noticed this, but the, um, the MP3 player is not an MP3 player, it's an MD3 player for your MDEG 3 audio. <laughs> it's like MP3 was still so new they didn't realize because it, it's printed on there twice. MD3, MD3, wow. Anyway, this is the Diamond Rio, the PMP 300, one that I've covered on LGR before, but the fact that it's MD3 player multiple times, that is fantastic. 
Um, a bunch of uh, relatively boring printers. Let's see here. A four megabyte magic video. Oh yeah, IO Magic. They always had the uh, the cheaper, kind of lower end graphics card options, but four megs, $30 for 2D and 3D. I don't know what kind of chip is on there. 48 speed CD-ROM, got some speakers. Oh, the Diamond Viper V550. I specifically do remember seeing that, the box art and being like, oh yeah, 16 megs. PCI or AGP for $170. You know, I didn't have anything like Voodoo graphics or Glide Mode, but Direct3D, heck yeah, not bad. The Dazzle Digital Video Creator, an OG capture device right there. Oh, along with the uh, the Hawthog Win TV. Uh, new from Compaq, uh, here we go. We're getting into the laptops. The laptops were always where the, the premium excessive prices were just all over the place. Like there was, it was always a whole lot more for a laptop compared to a desktop of similar specs. And, uh, but I mean, especially so in 1999, like check these things out. Uh, also AMD, but um, the K62 333, 12.1 inch HPA display. I'm not even sure what that means. I'm assuming it's not the same as the TFTs though, that were the higher end ones, but yeah, 32 megs of RAM, four gig hard drive, still $1,500, but look at these, $2399. Oh, actually, $27.99 before the $400 price break for a Pentium 2 300 Toshiba laptop, 13 inch display, 64 megs of RAM, 6.4 gig hard drive. That is pretty beefy for, for back then. But I mean, yeah, $27.99 adjusted for inflation now is that much. Yeah, not a cheap computer. I mean, none of the laptops were cheap, but especially not those. TFT though, that's what you want. The mid-range though, still $1,800. <laughs> it was seriously impressive if anyone I knew had a laptop back then, it was just like, holy crap, where'd you get the money for that? Got some modems, got this neat little BJC80 portable color printers. I've always kind of wanted one just because it looks neat and so suitable to the late 90s laptops that it was meant to go with. <laughs> Motorola pagers, heck yeah. We got this confusing bundle, what the heck? Internet discovery suite, everything you need to get the full internet experience all in one box. Includes the modem, Microsoft Money, Encarta, and Age of Empires. Yeah, nothing says the, uh, the full internet experience like Age of Empires and Microsoft Money. <laughs> oh, here we go. Now this is the, seriously, these pages, I used to like, Put these up on my bedroom wall. I was like uh, 13 years old. Just, be, I don't know, like seeing just the artwork because there were so few games I could buy per year that just uh, having printouts, it was, it was sort of aspirational seeing all the games that I wanted. And now I own like all of them. I'm sure those facts are unrelated. <laughs> I'm not, not compensating for any missed childhood at all. Anyway, uh, yeah, February frenzy. So it's talking about these. Wow, okay, I haven't seen these in forever. The CompUSA had these bugs, like computer bug plushies. Floppy, glitch, pixel, and zip, $4 each. I mean, you know, I probably wouldn't say no if I could find like the whole set now. I did like the Y2K plushie. I don't remember if it was from CompUSA, but I do have one of those. But yeah, those are, I don't know, they're kind of cute. They were trying to get some mascots going. Uh, as for the computer games though, yeah, here we get into the good stuff. Sierra, <laughs> $30 each for uh, original Half-Life, NASCAR Racing 99 edition, ProPilot 99, Return to Crondor. CompUSA always had an awesome selection of just big box Sierra stuff. And a lot of it uh, on discount too. Like I remember the bins up front near the, uh, the registers. That's where I got Outpost for a couple bucks and Earth Siege 2 and all that kind of stuff, man. What do we got here? Play games on email. Oh yeah, dude. So this is a weird little tidbit. Hasbro actually released, yeah, Battleship, Scrabble, Chess, and I think some others, these email games. It was pretty much just the regular board games, if I recall, but you would uh, play multiplayer with without any servers. It would just send the moves over email. Kind of like the old play by mail chess or checkers or whatever. I don't know, you could play games by mail too. Battletech for that matter had a play by mail. Uh, option, but that was snail mail. This was email. Ooh, it was so exciting. But the fact that they sold these as like separate editions and it wasn't just included in these games, like the regular ones for Windows 95, 
It is rather amusing in hindsight. Flight simulation, oh yeah, the premiums that were always commanded by Falcon. And any kind of flight sims, really, the, the bigger ones. But Falcon, it just comes with so much documentation and stuff in there that, yes, $60 on most is pretty merited. But you can see that is the most expensive PC game in here. <laughs> you just didn't uh, didn't get much higher than, like, yeah, 50 bucks quite often. You now, look at this. It's Thief the Dark Project cover art. Like, it has the standard trapezoid that it came in, but that cover art is different. Is that pre-release? I don't know. Never seen that. Ultima Online Second Age. MMOs were always rather expensive, too. <laughs> uh, very few Macintosh things. Some pretty boring stuff, but Ute Tower. That is uh, the better version compared to the Windows version, too, so that's, that's awesome. I only remember seeing this once in the store, and it was at Best Buy. <laughs> I was like, what the heck, Ute Tower? It looks like Sim Tower, is this a rip off? I'm like, oh wow, it's an actual sequel. And it was like, it, it came and went so quickly. Well, they actually do have some PlayStation games and N64, not much. I don't even know if they had a video game section at the uh, Greensboro Comp USA. They probably did, I just <laughs> was always focusing on the PC side of things that I never even looked. Oh wow, a Star Wars CD-ROM playset. It's one of those things that clips on top of your keyboard and transforms the whole thing into like a weird controller. <laughs> I don't have that one, but I have uh, like the Easy Bake Oven one, I think a Tonka one, maybe Matchbox, I don't know. There were a bunch of them. Disney Animated Storybooks, Detective Barbie, heck yeah, absolute classic. Putt-Putt Enters the Race, that is a Windows 95 like re-release with a Mac, so I got a hybrid CD. Lego Loco, still never played that. <laughs> Two things we had. Mavis uh, Beacon Teaches Typing 9 that introduced me to the series. We got that and this, like, right beside each other? Did we just go and, like, raid the stuff that was on sale at CompUSA? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, homeschool memories. But if there was educational edutainment software on the sale, then, oh, we were there. Uh, still selling stuff on VHS, of course. Mulan, now on VHS. But DVDs. Not a whole huge selection here, but still though, DVDs, extremely exciting in 99. Starting to take off. So much Norton stuff. Oh my goodness. Norton, 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 Norton. Uh, Maximizer system with a whole bunch of crap. My eyes glaze over looking at this now, and they, they certainly glazed over back then too in the stores. Although there's a few of these that I wouldn't mind having now, or actually have gone on to pick up. Just because it's so weirdly uncommon to see some of these applications complete in a big box, uh, like Laplink and that, you know, some of the earlier versions of uh, uh, Virus Scan, or uh, what is this? Gizmos 98, the power to make Windows better. I would buy that now. Enhance creativity with exciting image software. Now these I really did pay attention to. I was always, always more interested in anything visual or, you know, editing audio too, but uh, yeah, visual stuff in particular especially in 99, 2000, where I could uh, manipulate images without paying an exorbitant fortune. I always had, uh, back then it was Jask Paint Shop Pro. I wanna say version six or seven ended up getting uh, on sale at some store. It was wonderful. I really liked that program. And of course, like uh, Kai's Power Goo and Super Goo, whatever, all those kind of things. <laughs> Oh uh, man, all the dummies books, $10 each. Sort of uh, learned HTML on uh, one of the dummies books, but also the, I really like the idiot's guides a little bit better. Maybe I would like these better as an adult. I haven't actually read one in decades. Uh, family tree. We had this too. I swear we just went to CompUSA and bought these things on sale. <laughs> but I remember how many CDs this came with and like we were looking for all these kind of things and just didn't find a whole bunch of information. Now it's so easy to like look up all this stuff online, but back then, yeah, individual CDs and CD-ROM programs for everything. I did, in particular, really enjoy these 3D home and um, landscaping programs. Didn't have any of these, I have some of them now, but yeah, those were awesome. Been meaning to do a video on those kind of things for years. Oh my goodness, here we go. Hip Hop EJ had this I want to say it came from CompUSA as well. Maybe, probably Best Buy actually. I don't know. 
But yeah, hip hop EJ, techno EJ, dance EJ, rave EJ, had them all at one point, just grab them whenever they were on sale. That and Rebirth got me into any kind of musical manipulation and working with samples and stuff on a computer. That was my introduction to all that. And the last couple pages, yeah, some just useful upgrades and expansion things. You got your 6.4 gig hard drive, $150. Most expensive one being $170 after rebate. 8.4 gig hard drive. 10 gigs is $230 before the rebate. Actually do have a CDRW in there. Those were starting to become more of a thing, just a little bit. I didn't get one until 2001, I think. 32 megs of RAM is $40. 128 meg RAM modules, $150. Got your zip drive there for $150. Still actually had an ISA card available, just a networking deal of some kind. It was very much in the era of PCI, but yeah, still had ISA things. Typically not advertised. I'm mostly just surprised to see it advertised. You still see them in stores, but yeah. Oh, wow. Wow, the web racer. This is another one of those goofy mouse devices that I've had people ask me to cover. I don't actually have one, but yeah, the Kensington Web Racer. It's got like a touchpad and a bunch of programmable buttons or whatever, I don't know, it's all kinds of stuff. Just one of those internet mouse devices. There were so many of between like 1998 and 2000, 2001. Got the Gravis Exterminator gamepad. I always like the Sidewinder a little better than that one. Uh, NASCAR Pro Racing wheel with pedals. I don't see any force feedback things. Digital imaging, yeah, here we go, digital cameras. Holy crap, would you look at that? That's the DC260. That's the uh, camera that you can play Doom on. There were a bunch of them, but yeah, this is the one I specifically did a video on some years back. <laughs> That's neat to see right there. $900. I knew it was relatively high end for the time, but that's, yeah, wow. Uh, 1999 though, um, check out all these specs. You got one megapixel, 1 1.6, 1.3. We do actually have a Sony Mavica right there. $800 for a floppy disk camera, though that is the FD81, so it has the 3X optical zoom, ability to record voice memos. Oh, that I would love to have. The Mavica photo printer. I don't even know if I realized there was a Mavica branded one. I have a couple of Sony photo printers from back then, or they were really just like still image printers. You plug in your video to it and it'll just print whatever is coming through the signal. But I guess this is just, yeah, this has a floppy drive built in. That's so cool. First digital printer to use a floppy disk drive. Oh, I need it. Oh, if I wasn't about to leave for this show to Illinois right like after this, I'd be surfing eBay. Who am I kidding? I'd probably do it anyway. Got the Kodak APS film scanner. <laughs> I do have one of those as well. It's only for uh, yeah advanced photo system film. MGI Photo Suite. I do remember having this at one point. Not liking it as much though as uh, Paint Shop Pro. Another uh, CD. This is a CDR drive. Not rewritable. Yeah, this is rewritable. This one just says CDR, so neat. Well, anyway, uh, that is pretty much it. Like I said, just a, a very simple, kind of straightforward video. Oh, I just noticed my other camera turned off completely. Let me turn that back on. <laughs> okay, well, anyway, uh, yeah, I'm gonna get these batteries all charged up before the trip, because I'm gonna be filming that. Um, yeah, like I said, just a, a simple, kind of straightforward video here, because this is what this is that I have time for this week. And uh, I don't know, I just like doing these catalog flyer insert videos anyway, every so often. I think it's it's been years since I did one of these, but honestly, I just don't run across these catalogs too much at all. Like they're just not something that most people saved. So every so often I'll find like a seller that just has a stash of them. They have a bunch of newspapers or just a bunch of inserts and things like that from the Sunday papers back in the day. For me, it was the golden era of when we were getting the newspaper uh, on Sundays in particular, from like 97 to 2002. And then we left the country and we never got newspapers again after that, but that's all I gotta say. I hope to uh, see you at the show if you're able to make it to uh, VCF Midwest 2023. Again, uh, September 9th and 10th. I'm gonna film a bunch of stuff, try to do something a little bit different this year in terms of the, the way it's presented because I don't really like to do the same video over and over, you know. Um, 
But yeah, it's just such a fun show. So really looking forward to it. Hope to see a bunch of you there. And uh, yeah, that's all for this video. And I hope that you enjoyed it for what it was. But we'll get to more normal things once I return and all that. Uh, I'm also playing Starfield. Does anybody want to see a Starfield review? I don't know if I'm going to actually do that, but I'm thinking about it. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on that too, I guess. <laughs> All right, we're just getting into it here. I'm going to keep talking about nonsense. But thank you very much for watching if you made it this far, and uh, see y'all at the show. And if not, in the next video, whenever that may be.